I know. 5,800, Gus. I've been on the hook before. It's out of my hands now. You gotta pay up today. Now, Mr. Finelli, tell me how. You got your headaches, I got mine. You know about my heart condition. Where can I dig up that kind of dough? You own a garage, a couple of produce trucks. You got a good business. I, I owe four months' rent. I owe back wages. I'm in hock. Your wife drives a nice car. I can't. That's hers. What's the matter? You afraid she won't put out anymore? The bank owns the car. You spend a lot on that chick, Gus. Maybe you can't afford it now. What do you want? I should cash in my wife with you? <laughs> with my heart? <laughs> now look, you clean up these IOUs today. Otherwise, I gotta send around to collect. Fidelity, please. One more week. What'll it be then? Hustling laundry, eh, Ruby? Ah, uh, this kind of wash, I don't mind hustling. No ambition. That's what happens when you grow up in the slums. Yeah. If I'd only had the advantages other kids had, might have been some big school teacher even. <laughs> See you in night school. Yeah. Getting heavier. So is the payoff. Hey, tell me, is the ratio of the net uh, profits to the gross keeping pace with the standing overhead percentage wise? I'll explain it to you someday. Don't bother. I don't even understand the question. Grease for the wheels of justice. Grease? And I thought it was shirts.
nice and clean now, Sergeant. Now, to try one of these steam baths sometimes, Rudy, takes out all the poison. You've been on the take six years now. You ought to be able to afford your own bathtub. I don't get it all, Rudy. Just a little slice off the bottom. Now, you'll make captain someday, Sergeant. Then you can split the pay all of your own way. Shouldn't Welsh. You can't beat it out of me. It won't do no good. Okay, that's enough. Beat it. Gus! Not a word out of you. Oh, yeah, it's fine. Oh, Gus, come on. We'll be late for the show. Gus! What happened? I saw somebody run out. Oh, Gus, are you all right? What happened to you? Who did it? What did they want? It's nothing. I'm all right. Yeah, you're all right. Oh, I know. I can take care of myself. Yes, you look like it. I'm going to call a doctor. Oh, my shit. I'm sorry, Lou. I'm sorry. Okay. Why don't you go on home? Remember, sucker, fifty-eight hundred bucks. We'll be back tomorrow. Rogers, I want you to see this. This is the big, big headline in Brooklyn today. And here with us is Ed Reed, one of the enterprising reporters who fearlessly broke this story. Ed, suppose you tell us about it in your own words. Well, George, I've been working on this story for six weeks now. And I know there are between 20 and 30 horse rooms operating in Brooklyn. I've been in half a dozen of them myself. A horse room is where you place bets on the races. Now, do you consider such betting evil or immoral? 
Well, not the betting, George, but the fact that a huge syndicate is operating with police protection. How do you know this police protection? Well, the whole operation is too big, too open, too brazen. If I could find out about it, so could the police. And this is the crux of the matter. Somewhere in this town, there's a man more powerful than the mayor, the district attorney, the chief of police. He's more powerful because he has the police in his pay. If the police will give protection to the gamblers, they'll sell it to the thieves and murderers, too. I have reason to believe they already have. Well, that's a very serious charge. Any facts to back it up? Some citizens have been beaten up by these bookies, but they're afraid to complain to the police for all too frequently in the pay of the syndicate. When the law is suspended for a price and truth and justice can be peddled on the marketplace, then every citizen's in danger. And the law belongs to the highest bidder. Well, Rogers, you're Deputy Commissioner of Police Personnel. You recommend we sue them for slander? Now, look, Norris, I have over 7,000 men under me. You've got to expect a few rotten apples. Or more than a few. I'm talking about a payoff that runs into millions of dollars. And that has to include lieutenants and captains. As far as I know, a few inspectors. Well, the police commissioner agrees. I have a plan here for a wholesale shift in personnel involving every precinct in the borough. No one ever got rid of rotten apples by just shifting them around in the barrel. The men on the take will just start operating in their new precinct. As we know, they always do. Inside of a week, the syndicate will be right back in business again. From past experience, we know that what we need is some honest cops to catch a few crooked ones. A group we can be dead certain has not been corrupted. And I think I know where to find them. Who's going to deliver them, the stork? Let me be closer to the truth than you think. The police academy is graduating 40 rookies the day after tomorrow. Forty bright, ambitious young men who don't think honesty is a dirty word. I want them assigned to me, personally and secretly. In order to maintain secrecy, I established temporary quarters in the downtown office building and proceeded to assign the rookies to various areas and different jobs. Sit down, Harris. Thank you, sir. Mr. Heller tells me you did some intelligence work in the Marines. Yes, sir, in Japan. I think you're the man for this assignment. This is the 65th precinct. It's running wide open. They close down a horse room one day, and the next day is operating a block away. Sometimes I think the bookies run faster than the horses. <laughs> we want you to go in there and find out everything you can about the operation. Just going cold, sir? Everything we know is in this file. Study it. Oh. This is a picture of Lil Palumbo. We have a hunch she's a good lead. Her husband was in deep to the bookies. He turned up dead a few days ago. An accident, maybe. Well, we questioned her, but all we got back were echoes. She's too scared to talk. Establish yourself in the neighborhood. Now, this is a complete file on the widow. I want you to get acquainted with her, get her to talk. We don't expect any one man to come up with all the answers. But in the end, we want to know who's collecting the money, who's delivering it, and who's getting paid off. And finally, who's running the whole syndicate for Brooklyn. Oh, yes, I understand, sir. You need somebody to work with you. Anyone you'd prefer? Yes, Johnson. Johnson? All right, he's yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Churn, you're a fine looking policeman. Yeah. Well, what's the matter, Pete? Oh, honey, I guess it's just uh, getting back into uniform again. <laughs> Sergeant Peter Harris, U.S. Marine Corps. Now, Private Pete Harris, New York Police Department. Onwards and upwards. Like starting all over again, isn't it? Yeah, except that I'm ten years older. And ten years handsomer. Mm. <laughs> I like older men. No.
work out, Pete. I know it. Mm. That must be Jess. You got enough for dinner? Ever since you do homework together, I shop for three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. I picked him in Prospect Park. That's against the law. You're speaking on officer, ma'am. I am the law. <laughs> oh, they're lovely. Thank you. Put him in water. Uh, honey, uh, while you're at it, would you put a little scotch in water, please? So you're not in uniform. Hey, happy? <laughs> well, aren't we snazzy, huh? What a doll. A real doll. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, all right. Don't overdo it, huh? Very cute. Now you can put it back in mothballs. Why? Why? Well, the uniforms are pounding a beat, honey. We're plain clothes. Hey, Jess. Like badge 540 here. Hey, Pete, I want you to watch this guy. Watch him closely. See how he does it. You may learn something. What's he talking about? Mm. Oh, it's nothing, honey. It's our first assignment. It's plain clothes. That's... Didn't you tell her how we're going to lower the boom on the bookie syndicate? Jess, will you shut up? This is supposed to be a secret investigation. Hey, we can tell her. Pete rented an apartment on 29th Avenue near the Palumbo garage. A few of the younger men who could pass for students were ordered to enroll at different colleges, known hotbeds of gambling. Others got jobs as truck drivers, telephone linemen, and waiters. Some of the rookies were given a course in wiretapping procedure. Hi, Pappy. Uh. Hey. This ain't a bad looking joint. We could throw a little party in this place. <laughs> All the night's work, you understand what I mean? Yeah. Well, I just may do that, but uh, you're not invited. Somebody. Widow, huh? She's not a bad looking dame. I don't care what she looks like, she's going to appeal to me. Really going on a make, huh? You know a better way to get a dame to talk? No. Seriously, Pete. You wouldn't go that far, would you? Seriously? Yeah, I'd go that far. Badge 540. New York's finest. You heard what the man said about opportunity? Well, I'm gonna be at the head of that line. Look, you look that file over. In about ten minutes, you go down to the corner bar. I'll see you there. If I get a lead on anything, follow me out of there and look the place over from the outside. Well, I'm off to the garage in the start of a beautiful friendship. Remember, when you see me, you don't know me. Harris's story was that he had just returned to Brooklyn after living in California. He knew Lil Palumbo was now running her late husband's garage. Here by the month? $25. One wash job a week, no pickups, no deliveries. Fine. Right. I just moved into the neighborhood. Is there a shoe repair around here? Right down the block, there's a shoe repair, delicatessen, bar, candy store, and a fortune teller. Thanks. If I need anything else, I'll ask a fortune teller. That'll be $25 in advance. Fine. Uncle Barney looks good in the fourth at Hollywood Park. You know where can lay a bet? Why gamble? Save your money for the better things in life. Like whiskey. <laughs> I don't know. Odds are 20 to 1. Looks good to me. You know where can lay a bet? Tell you what. Yeah. There's a hex stand down the street. Yeah. Get a cabbie to take you out to LaGuardia. Hop on a plane, and you'll be in California in time for the race. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, Mervyn, if I was single, I'd marry you. <laughs> you doll. <laughs> Hi, folks. What do you have? Beer. Two beers, draft. Two beers, draft? Come on up. I heard about your husband. It's too bad. It must have happened right after he took that shellacking. Make a donation in his name. I'm just trying to put you wise. To what? Well, you've been around as long as I have. You know a couple of things. Uh, Gus had insurance, didn't he? So? So play it smart. On suicide, they don't pay double indemnity. Who said anything about double indemnity or suicide? Everybody carries double indemnity. Now, look, if those insurance dicks find out about that strong arm treatment, they're gonna snoop around for five years to prove that Gus was in trouble and then he drove himself off the road. Hey, all of a sudden, you're so interested in my welfare. Now, I know it's none of my business, but uh, I know you're alone now and I'm kind of alone, I thought. So uh, we orphans have to kind of take care of each other, huh? Ah, oh, the gentleman from California. Hi. Can I buy you a drink? I already have one, but you can give me your car keys. You took them with you, and your car's blocking traffic in my garage. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks. Uh, why don't you sit down? All right. I thought everybody was moving the other way. How come you come from the coast here? <laughs> business. All right, special kind? Rudy's a business expert. He drives a laundry truck. Your business, my business, his business. <laughs> I don't mind. I had a piece of luck. An aunt left me a couple of houses on the side of Atlantic Avenue. I grew up around there. Around here? Yeah. Yeah, I've been looking at you over my shoulder up here. Aren't you Lil Alexander? I, I was. PS 47, sixth grade, Miss Lederman's class, right? Mm. Huh? <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> well, I don't remember you. Well, I sure remember you. We were both 12 years old. I was looking at you, but uh, you were looking at those big guys of 14. Oh, that's me, all right. <laughs> Always looking at them. Yeah. The trouble with me is I never got past the fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I've got some business. I'll see you around. And uh, remember, just say the word. Sure, Rudy. Thanks. Well, I guess I better get back, too. So the grease monkeys can get a break. Hey, uh, wait a minute. Like your keys. Oh, I almost I, forgot. I don't even know your name. Is it still the same? Mrs. Palumbo. Well, I, it was. I, I guess it still is. My husband's dead. Oh. Just live. Give me another beer, huh? Okay. So you want the PS 47, huh? That's right. It isn't too late, you can make that bet. Yeah? Back at a barber shop, on a corner. Yeah. Tell them Mervyn, the cheerful loser, sent you. And why you to uh, give my love to my wristwatch. <laughs> yeah. For you, I feel lucky. One in the house. Oh, thanks. Yeah? What do you right want? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Ten to win on Uncle Barney. In the stretch, it's Coffee Clutch, Big Emma, Coral D, and King Jonas. They're coming down to the line of finish. It's Coffee Clutch by a length and a half, Big Emma, Carol D, and King Jonas. I ain't seen you around. I just moved into the neighborhood. First National, I got a check for $10 on Pete Harris. He's a good. For 10 bucks, you got a check with Dun and Bradstreet? You'd be surprised the things horse players will try. And now the changes for the third race. Scratch, Molly Q. Jockey substitution. Mr. McCoy will be ridden Come by. On, I want to get on this Jim race. Huh? I'm taking my watch. 
Take his bet. You don't mind. I'll hold on for the bank. They shouldn't be disappointed. I didn't wait. McCoy moving up, Uncle Bonnie and poor Pam on the outside. They're coming out of the line of finish, and it's Uncle Bonnie by a nose, Molly Q by a length and a half, Mr. McCoy by a length, followed by Uncle Bonnie on the nose. Checks good. Pay the man. I think we ought to cover ourselves and spread some of it around a bit. Good idea, Finelli. We'll do. I like a jerk, I locked myself out. You live around here? Yeah, that's right. A couple of blocks over, 251 Anthony Place. See your registration. Sure. What does it take today? Uh, we cleared 30 G's. Good, good, Finelli. Okay? You better get yourself some new place. Those out of towners are only good for 30 days. Thanks. <laughs> good night, officer. rooms were located. Motion pictures, photographs, tape recordings were made. A mountain of evidence was collected, but none of this led beyond the small fry, the petty hirelings of the syndicate. The problem remained, how to find the higher-ups and the police who were selling protection. Rogers, I think now is the time to order the complete shift of police personnel. A, a real shakeup. The word would be passed around, new contacts made, protection arranged for. This business is too lucrative to stop even for one day. Oh, I agree. A lot of the reorganization would be done on the phone, fast. Now we're in a position to pick it up. <laughs> The 
sheets on, even in here. Well, at least this heat can't send a man to Flatbush. Uh, Rudy, that's uh, Sergeant Bonnie. He's your new contact. You're going to like our laundry service, Sergeant. You better take a good gander so you don't make any mistakes. I'll recognize you. You got that cop look. Like that. Like you never missed a meal in your life. Finelli said there was this guy hanging around the alley. When he spotted Finelli, he took off fast. Was he wearing sneakers? Sneakers are floor shimes. Who cares? Well, if he was wearing sneakers, probably he's a second story man casing the joint for a heist. Sure, what else? Any cheap crook thinks when he knocks off a bookie, we'll be scared to go to the cops. And I'll keep an eye open. Any gun that gets ideas, he'll be telling it to the coroner. That's right, Sergeant. Do your duty. Pete, I'm worried. I've been worried ever since Fat Boy spotted me in that alley. You think Finelli caught on? I don't know. Could be. Look, Pete, let's stay clear for a while. Nope. If we do that, we'll never get anything done. We've got to make that fast tonight. Look, Pete, why take a chance? Why blow the whole thing? If you feel that way about it, I'll pick up the tape myself. You can sit this one out. Come on, how you know I wouldn't feel right about that? I can't force you, Jess. Okay. Okay, you win. What time? Where do we meet? Make it 2 a.m., huh? I got a date with Lil tonight. She told me Gus was in hock to the bookies. Now I want to get the blow by blow on the why and the how he died. What happens if you strike out? Uh, weekend in Atlantic City, huh? Yeah, you could really find out everything she knows. Chicken salads, two coffees, and, and two uh... aspirin. Oh? It, it's just nerves. The doctor said I, I should have had kids, but I kept putting it off. I don't know why. And now I'll tell you about my operation. <laughs> sure. It's your turn. You talk. Well, what do you want to know? Uh, really, the kind of guy you pretend to be. Hmm? You know, this easy come, easy go, around the world in a balloon type. I, I don't think that's your type at all. No? Which is what is my type? I think you're a serious Joe. You see something, see something you want, and you go after it. Is that bad? I like the serious type. They do it for kicks, guys. Never sold me. Hey, can I join the party? Well, Mr. Harris invited me out, Rudy. Uh, did you invite Rudy, too? No. He says you're not invited. We'll be alone, huh? Okay. Pretty sensitive type, huh? One date, and he's ready to move in and play house. Did you know him from before? I met him the, the night Gus was beat up. Oh, yeah. Why was your husband beat up? Oh, bookies, I guess. He owed him a mint. Did Gus kill himself? You don't by any chance have a connection to an insurance company. Hmm? Oh, forget it. Now tell me about yourself. 
Well, come on, we better eat before we catch that show, huh? Thanks, Pete. I enjoyed the show very much. How about making me a cup of coffee? I don't think I'd better. Besides, I don't have any coffee. Uh, how about tea? Hot water? That's what I'm afraid of getting into. There's an actor that parks his car in the garage. He gave me two tickets for a play next Wednesday night. All right. I'll pick you up about uh, 7 o'clock. Circle the block once. That'll give you plenty of time. Well, hey, do you want to drive? I'll do it myself. Take care of yourself. Okay. in the alley. I, I got a tip. Somebody was trying to break into the barber shop. Who tipped you? An informer. It must have been Finelli. I never heard of Finelli. And I tell you, I didn't know Jess Johnson was a cop. Look, Mr. Norris, you better take me to a doctor. Come on, it's funny. Tell us what you're doing. Come on, you. Come on, you. Do you like his way better? Listen, he won't be an officer for very long. And neither will you if you try that again. I want you to hear what's on this tape recorder. Play it so he can hear. Listen, Bonnie. That D.A. thinks shuffling around a bunch of flat feet will drive us out of business. He'd better get himself a new crystal ball. Just because the D.A. is driving a three-year-old car is no reason why we should. What's the orders? Business as usual. Deliver the bundle on the first, same as always. The new man's name is Bonnie. Got it? Bonnie. Okay. I'll see he's taken care of. You want to hear it again, Bunny? So you didn't know he was a cop? Did you know what was on that tape? How could I know? Who else was in on the tape? And who's the boss? Do you want to know how it's going to sound in court when I try you for murder? 
You want to know what the jury's going to hear? You think you'll convince them you were just doing a job? Shooting a prowler! We're booking for conspiracy and first degree murder. Stay here while I call the police commissioner. Sit down. I want some, some water. I'll get it for you. Getting him a drink of water, and he. You better go down there. You stay here. What are you doing? I gotta spend more time in the other apartment. Now? Now? Plumber woman gave me an important lead. She told me her husband was beat up by the bookie just before he was killed. I got a plan. I'm gonna find out who's behind all that. You might wind up killed too, like Jess. Jess's death was an accident. Couldn't be helped. Pete, do you have to go through with this? Yeah, I gotta go through with it, okay? No, honey, no, I could tell him that I'm quitting. Because my little wife is afraid. I am afraid. Not just because of the danger. Well, then what is it? It's what's happening to you. Nothing else matters anymore. Is the job so important? Yeah, it's important to me. Dick Janey, I gotta make it. Don't you understand that? I'll pass Finale a big check and then close out my account at the bank. He'll send his collectors around and I'll squawk with the cops. See, that way we'll get a line on the muscle men and maybe on the police at the same time, right? If you leave to tell us about it. I can take care of myself. I'll be waiting for him. Norris won't go for it, Hurst. Yeah? Okay, it was just an idea. What's my next move? We raided the room behind the barber shop. It was empty. They were tipped off. You find the new horse room, keep on betting. I'll assign another man to work with you and tap their new lines. Harris found out from the corner shoeshine boy that Finelli had moved his horse room behind Tony's bar. There, he deliberately passed a bad check for $300. Oh, Lil, hello. I, I was calling about tonight. I, I haven't seen you around in so long. I thought maybe you'd forgotten. The show? Oh, no, no, I didn't forget. It's just that, well, I've been busy. You know, uh, problems, problems. Oh, well, maybe I can help you with them. Now, listen, you take that understanding note out of your voice, and I'll be crying on your shoulder. Well, maybe I'd like that. Never tried the Girl Scout bit. About seven o'clock? Seven will be fine. And I'll wear my merit badges. Goodbye. You're making a big mistake, buddy. Get over there. Up against the candle. Come on, move! Kind of cute, though. Come on, put your feet on.
Closing up that bank account. Didn't you think we'd notice? Who sent you here? Finale had a guy who gives him his orders. What's the difference? Police Department, 65th Precinct. Get smart, buddy. Take a black eye now instead of a black box later. Hello, my name's Harris. Now get this. Apartment 3C, 251 Anthony Place. I got a couple of goons here sent up by the bookies to work me over. Look, they're gonna be two dead muscle men if you don't get over here fast. Officer, what's your name? Who am I speaking to? Hello? <laughs> A guy named Harris says Bucky's are giving him some trouble. Just plain drunk. Please try Evergreen 40598. Yes, I I've been trying them for about a half hour and the line seems to be busy. Would you check it for me? I'm sorry, that line is out of order. I'll report it for you. Thank you. trying to reach you for now. You said you'd be home for dinner. We have a date tonight with a meal. Hello. Who do you want? Pete Harris. Is this Evergreen 40598? Is this Evergreen 40598? You have the wrong number. Don't tell me you're his sister. I... I happen to have a date with him. Well, he's in the pokey. Barry? What happened? He was exchanging compound fractures with a couple of gorillas. I've had fights in my apartment before, but never one like this. Oh. Uh, not even among the married people. You see him in jail, tell him to stay there. I need one of no Madison Square Garden. Harris. Yeah, I remember. I 
Good. Send them in. I'll handle it. Take them in. All right. Don't get too shy. Look, Captain, I like to get pushed around, see? All right, all right. What's this all about? I owe the bookies a wad. They said they sent a couple of strong arms over to collect. I call the cops and who gets pinched? Me. Look, I just want to get one thing straight, Captain. Who gets protection around here, me or the bookies? Did you actually see anything to back up his story? No, sir. Just plain drunk. Yeah, I can smell it from here. Look, I'm not drunk. Let him sleep it off. See how he feels about it in the morning. Well, Captain, there's a horseman on B Street. The boss's name's Finale. Look, I'm not drunk! I'm not drunk! Does Pete Harris live here? My husband isn't home now. Well, my name is Palumbo. Uh, Pete parks his car in my well, in my husband's garage. There's there's been a fight and what happened? Well, the cops took Pete in and we think you better call a lawyer. I. Oh sure, I'll call right away. Well, uh, bye. Goodbye and thank your husband for me too. Sure. Sure. District Attorney Norris, please. This is Mrs. Pete Harris. No, it's personal. Ask him to call me. It's urgent. Because it's all a bunch of lies. That's the difference. A bunch of lies. Well, there's one thing that's no lie, Lou. Plenty of loot. What about your wife and kids? They gonna come along too? I got no wife and kids. How's a girl to know? What's with this wife and kids routine? You know that Pete Harris, huh? Yeah. You think he's single, huh? I don't know. Yeah, you think he lives around here, huh? Well, he doesn't live around here. He lives at 733. Stanford and the Hobart Apartments. I was over there tonight and he's married and he's got a pretty wife. And the whole time he's around here giving me a run. Well, I don't get it. What's his racket? I don't know. Beats me. Maybe he's queer for widows who run garages. Oh, I've had it. I'm going home. Give me my shoe. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't walk. I'll drive you. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Thanks just the same, but I know that a little bit. You drive me home, the next thing I know, you'll want to come upstairs for a cup of coffee, and the next thing I know, I'll be frying your eggs in the morning and washing your shirt. No thanks, Rudy. Good night. We goof, Captain. He's a copper. Okay, I'll try the phone. Hello. Henry Zelligatessen? You have the wrong number. Sorry. Everything okay? Yeah.
Benelli, tell the cops we're all set. I can spring Harris now. Hey, taxi! Pete Harris. Can I reach Mr. Norris? Hello, Harris. This is Heller. Where are you? I'm home. I just sent a lawyer down to get you out. Get me out? How'd you know I was in? I told him. Lil Palumbo was here. Lil Palumbo? You're going to have a lot of explaining to do, Harris. Hey, hey, listen, listen. It worked out fine. I got plenty on the boys of the 65th. I'll try to reach Norris and call you back. Yeah, okay. You don't suppose he wants to tell a DA on us, do you? How did Lil Palumbo get here, huh? I don't know. She was worried about you. Really worried. <laughs> I had a date with Lil for tonight. Just how far were you prepared to go with her? Mm -hmm. Oh, honey, now wait a minute. Well, that's probably Norris. I'll get it. Yeah, hello. This line is temporarily out of order. Please excuse the ring. This is a recording. Of all times with a phone to go out of order. Operator. Operator, there's something wrong with my line. Call the service department, please. 811. Service department. Uh, operator, there's something wrong with this line. Sorry, the day crew handles that. Well, if there's an emergency, I'm a police officer. Police officer? Well, we'll see what we can do about that. What's the address? 733 Sanford. What did they say? They said they'd get a man up here. Easy with this. You drop that and you'll get up to their apartment without the elevator. What if it rings when I'm up there? Don't worry, it won't. Anyway, we'll cut off the calls from here. Okay, here goes. Get out fast. You're sorry about that Palumbo dame, aren't you? Not the way you mean. I suppose you think I gave her raw deals, then. You should have seen Mrs. Palumbo when she found out you were married. She tried to cover for you. Didn't have to make with the hearts and the flowers. It takes two to make with hearts and flowers. Honey. You don't want to understand that you used her, you hurt her. Will you forget about the Palumbo dame? She doesn't mean anything to me, and she doesn't mean anything to you. That's not what she thinks. That's right, sister. Never trust a cop. Janie, look, will you... Money. It's too bad the show is just getting interesting. Twenty-three talking. Try three nine oh four. I thought the trouble was in the line. No, it's uh, short in the selector circuit. Oh yeah. Go on, say it. What's the use? It's taken him a long time. Yeah, well, he seems long. Mr. Harris? Yeah? Everything okay? Yes, sir. Wait for money. Janie. Pete, I'm tired. Okay, all right, so I hurt her feelings. I'm sorry. She'll get over it. The work I'm doing is much more important. The work you're doing is making a big man of Pete Harris. You don't 
don't care about the bookies or anything else. That's not true. Jess died because you were bucking for a promotion. And you pushed him. Jess... I didn't push him any harder than I pushed myself. That must be a great comfort to him now. What are you, what are, what are you trying to say? There's a big empty place inside of you, Pete. That separates you from other people. Jess cared for you. I love you. Maybe that other woman loves you, too. But we can't reach Pete Harris. You feel alone all the time. When a person feels alone, they can be indifferent. Cruel. Well, if that's what you really think, maybe you ought to be married to somebody else. I thought if I loved you enough, maybe you'd learn that other people count. Janie, you know how I feel about you, don't you? All right, maybe other people don't count, but you do, you do. <laughs> Pete, that's no answer. It's all set. What's the phone? I gotta see him right away. That ain't gonna be so easy. Look, Norris is breathing down my neck. Well, I'll do what I can. Look, Finelli, tell him they already suspended three of my men. Okay, I'll be in touch. Thompson and Higgins just followed Wills into the subway. What about Wills? I've got a team tailing him. And Lil Palumbo? How did she find out where I lived? And Lil Palumbo's clean. Her story checks. Sure she is. Who'd she talk to after she left my place? She couldn't remember. I'll make her remember. Harris, you're going to do things my way. What you learned yesterday could prove that Wills is working for the syndicate. An important lead. We still don't have the kind of evidence we need to close in on them. As long as you're on the force, Harris, you'll take your orders from me. All right. Maybe I better quit before I can. Yes? Pete! What do you want? What happened, happened, and I'm sick to death about it. But Mr. Norris said that everything Last was... Last night, after you left my apartment, who did you talk to? I told Mr. Norris. I don't remember. Just try a little harder. I, I can't. Oh. Now, where did you go? I, I... I went to the bar down the street. Who with? Nobody. Who else was there at the time? I... I... Try to remember. I can't. Where did you go afterwards? I, I came home, I came. Alone? Yes. How did you get here? Did you drive? I, I Try to remember! I walked! Walked? Yes. No, I remember. I walked. I, I, I walked home in my stocking feet. 
In, in my stocking feet. I, I broke the heel of my shoe and Rudy tried to help me. Rudy! Get, help get my shoe, my shoe. Rudy, he was there the night that I was arrested on that phony charge. Rudy, Rudy, of course, I must have been blind. Do you know where to get in touch with him? The elite bar. It, the number's in my book. There you leave your name. Can't you leave me out of it? You out of it? If you hadn't opened your mouth, my wife would still be alive. Now get over here and talk. Hello? I, is Rudy there? I, I, I can't hear. Just a minute. I go on. Would you say that again? Would you tell him Lil Palumbo called and wants him to come over as soon as he comes in? Thanks. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna talk to him. And if he's the one, you're gonna kill him? You're gonna get him here and kill him? Are you worried about Rudy? No, I'm worried about a guy named Pete Harris. If you kill him, you're just as bad as he is. Come on, turn it off. I can't just turn it on and turn it off. All right, I was straining you. You were had. You better get used to the idea. So I've been taken. I, I fell for it. What do you want me to do about it? I'm sorry, Lil. I'm sorry it worked out like this. A lot of things worked out wrong. I'm gonna set one thing right. saw me today. You want to know who I talked to? Rudy, did you have anything to do with it? Now, what do you want to listen to cops for? Forget about them. Think about yourself. Do yourself some good. Here, look. I'm going to take a vacation. Come with me. I'm sorry, Rudy. That cop, huh? You're still carrying a torch. I guess I am. Don't you know he did a job on you? I can just hear him laughing it up with her. Telling her how you made with the hearts and flowers. How come you know so much about what he said to his wife? I get around. A laundry driver? Forget it. No. Sound like you know what he said. You did listen, didn't you? I said forget it. I'm telling Why? you. Why? Because you've said too much and because I know too much. And if I know too much, you'll have to kill me the way you killed her. Look, I don't kill anybody. I only take orders. But they'll give you orders to kill me and you'll kill me. They don't even need me to do it. Don't you know what this is? This is a million bucks. One million bucks every week. They get hundreds of runners. The whole city's sewed up. Cops right up to the top. They can squash you like a bug and me. Lightweight squash guts. Shut up. You killed him. You were there and you now beat you him up. you listen to me and you listen hard. You shoot off your mouth and what happened to Gus is nothing to what will happen to you. And you remember that.
boss, Captain Wells, you always get curb service. Thanks. Mr. Edmondson? Just the race results. There's a story on page one. A woman was killed. It's an accident. Barney. Johnson, Mrs. Harris. All accidents. Look, I've had it. Take a walk, Rudy. This is private. According to my figures, you've taken over 30 grand from us in the past six years. For looking the other way when the bookies came around, not for murder. I can see your point. I can't take any more. There's a letter in my pocket. My resignation from the force for reasons of health. I'm turning it over to the commissioner tomorrow. Turn it up, Wills. We need you right where you are, at the police station. If you resign now, others will panic. And we've got an organization we have to keep running. The DA's on my back. There's an investigation. Three of my men are on the list. Now pull yourself together. Nobody's testified against us yet. I'm through, Edmondson. One way or another, I'm through. All right, Wills. Let's play table stakes. You are afraid of what the DA will do to you. Well, we have a lot more to lose. That's my hand, Wills. You want to call it? Give me that letter. standing there listening. He was alone. I'm afraid, Harris, you know too much. Another accident. Should I send you back to the DA? Where does it end? You ask too many questions. Rudy. Come. Well, uh, suppose I can ask for police protection, can I, Captain? Hold it. Drop it, Rudy. Drop it.
smashing of the bookie ring is the big, big story in Brooklyn today. And here are some candid camera shots to tell you that story. This is the laundry where it all happened last night. The raid produced the names of dozens of police officers who have been selling protection to the bookies. With the arrest of millionaire boss bookie Ralph Edmondson, District Attorney Norris struck a death blow at the syndicate that has been terrorizing Brooklyn. I was wondering how you were feeling, Pete. Oh, I, I feel fine, fine, thanks. I came to say goodbye. I won't be around anymore. I'm selling the garage. There's nothing to keep me around here, is there? No, I guess not. Good luck. Yeah, well, I'll see you around. Yeah, sure. It's a nice day for Brooklyn.